Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a quick review of Airframe by Michael Crichton. Um, I don't have a huge number of tabs, but as always, I'm going to read you the blurb, go through, check out my tabs, and then share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. Uh, I've been reading a lot of Michael Crichton recently because I want to job a lot of his books on eBay, so that's why. So, the blurb. Dane reads. Three passengers are dead, 56 are injured, the interior cabin virtually destroyed, but the pilot manages to land the plane. At a moment when the issue of safety and death in the skies is paramount in the public mind, a lethal mid-air disaster aboard a commercial twin jet airliner bound from Hong Kong to Denver triggers a pressured and frantic investigation. Airframe is non-stop reading, the extraordinary mixture of super suspense and authentic information on a subject of compelling interest that has been a Crichton landmark since the Andromeda strain. So as you can kind of tell from the position of my tabs, the second half start to drag a little bit. I did find this interesting though because I read this um, just after having watched uh, a documentary which I think was called Downfall um, about Boeing and basically Boeing had started off as a super safe airline manufacturer, airplane manufacturer, and then started to cut corners to make savings to please the stockholders with you know predictable results. And this is very much in that vein. Uh, and it starts with a couple of quotes, and I thought this one quote in particular is very prophetic if you think about the fake news age we live in now. The irony of the information age is that it's given new respectability to uninformed opinion. Veteran reporter John Lawton, 68, speaking to the American Association of Broadcast Journalists in 1995. And we get this little bit when the emergency happens. Um, the plane went into another steep dive. An elderly Chinese woman slid down the aisle on her back, screaming. A teenage boy followed, tumbling head over heels. Emily looked at Tim, but her husband wasn't in his seat anymore. Yellow oxygen masks were dropping, one swinging in front of her face, but she could not reach for it because she was clutching her baby. And that just reminds me of the fact that they always say on all of those safety announcements, put your own oxygen mask on first before attempting to fit it to your children. But then this plane was literally going so mad that if she'd let go of her child, it would have just gone like back the, uh, you know, back along the, what is it, a galley? What's, what's the fuselage? The thing anyway, it'd go back a few seats. And so uh, anyway, we get to like the place where the airplanes are manufactured and we get this. Uh, Richmond said, we got time for a cup of coffee. She shook her head. Coffee's not allowed on the floor. No coffee, he groaned. Why not? It's made overseas. Coffee's corrosive. Aluminium doesn't like it. Man, imagine, imagine that. Not that I drink as much coffee as I used to, but and I just thought this was interesting. And this captures what it's like to work in this kind of workplace. Um, Casey rode the elevator from the ninth floor down to her own offices on the fourth floor. She replayed the meeting with Marder and decided he wasn't lying. His exasperation had been genuine, and it was true what Marder said. Rumours flew through the plant all the time. A couple of years back, there was a week when the UAW guys had all come up, asking solicitously, how do you feel? It was days before she learned there was a rumour she had cancer. Just a rumour. Another rumour. Uh, and then Casey, who's like the lead investigator, she gets this sinister phone call, except we get a, don't be stupid bitch, a voice said. You want trouble, you'll get it. Accidents happen, we're watching you right now. And accidents very do much happen. I say accidents. Um, there are a few times when she's kind of, you know, carrying out her investigation and her life's under threat. And uh, I just thought this was interesting here. This kind of shows one of the twists, but again, it's one of those bits where Crichton includes like real world information that make his books quite interesting from that, that aspect of things. So Casey got into the elevator in administration, Richmond following her. I don't understand, he said. Why is everybody so angry with King? Because he's lying, Casey said. He knows the aircraft didn't come within 500 feet of the Pacific Ocean. Everybody would be dead if it did. The incident happened at 37,000 feet. At most, the aircraft dropped three or 4,000 feet. That's bad enough. So he's getting attention, making the case for his client. He knows what he's doing. Yes, he does. Hasn't Norton settled out of court with him in the past? Three times, she said. Richmond shrugged. If you have a strong case, take him to trial. Yes, Casey said, but trials are very expensive and the publicity doesn't do us any good. It's cheaper to settle and just add the cost of his green mail to the price of our aircraft. The carriers pay that price and pass it on to the customer. So in the end, every airline passenger pays a few dollars extra for their ticket in a hidden tax. The litigation tax. The Bradley King tax. That's how it works in the real world. Doesn't that make you mad as a consumer? And I just thought this was some great characterization of the character called Jennifer Malone, who's a reporter working on the story. Jennifer Malone awoke to the soft, insistent buzz of the bedside alarm. She turned it off and looked over at the tanned shoulder of the man next to her and felt a burst of annoyance. He was a stunt man on a TV series. She'd met him a few months back. He had a craggy face and a nice muscular body and he knew how to perform, but gee, she hated it when guys stayed over. She'd hinted politely after the second time, but he'd just rolled over and gone to sleep, and now here he was, snoring away. 
Jennifer hated to wake up with some guy in the room. She hated everything about it. The sounds they made breathing, the smell coming off their skin, their greasy hair on the pillow. Even the catches, the celebrities who made her heart skip over candlelight, looked like soggy beached whales the next day. It was like the guys didn't know their place. They came over, they got what they wanted. She got what she wanted. Everyone was happy. So why didn't they go the fuck home? So yeah, that's about all I want to share from Airframe. I don't want to do big spoilers or anything like that. Um, it's more of a slow burner really, but it is quite interesting to watch the um, investigation unfold. And as I say, because the lead investigator is being attacked along the way a couple times, it kind of does keep the... Um, you know, the sensation of threat up a little bit. Not as much as maybe in some of Crichton's other novels. Um, but yeah, it was an interesting old read, especially after watching that, that documentary on Boeing. So if you are going to read this, watch the documentary on Boeing first, then read this. Definitely do that. So yeah, I gave Airframe by Michael Crichton 3.5 out of 5. So there we have it, that's what I made of Airframe by Michael Crichton. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book, if you've read it, of course. Hit that like button, hit it. if you enjoyed this video, hit that subscribe button for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.